So a lot of people want to know, do you become a better technician the longer your beard gets? <laughs> Isn't there uh, one website that rates their difficulty of things on how long the beard is? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I don't know. Is that Revzilla? I don't know. I think so. Is. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, so this right here, guys, this is a level three full beard technician right here. We're dealing with here. So an immense amount of credibility here. What's up guys, Matt here coming to you from Laid Loss Harley-Davidson. We're in the back service department area and today we're doing a 1K service on a 2018 Street Bob. So the first year, the Milwaukee 8. Thanks John for uh, letting me bother you while you're doing the service. I know it kind of slows you guys down a little bit and time is money around here. But uh, we got John Terrado here. You guys have seen him in my past videos. A 17 year master technician back here. So he's run through this a million times in his career. So this isn't really a tutorial video on how to do this. There's plenty of places on the internet where you guys can find how to tutorial videos, but this is more of a, just a quick overview of what we do on a dealership level when you get a service. It just seems like it never stops where people come in. They say, yes, I've had my bike serviced properly over the years when they're trading in their bike or whatever. And it turns out there's major things that were neglected over the years because they felt like a service meant just changing the engine oil and there's a lot more to it than that. And so I'm gonna kind of go into the different things and John's gonna talk us through what he does on a typical 1K service and the things he checks and the things he changes and just a lot of the little details he does as well. you've done this once or twice in your day because you were doing it faster than I could talk about it basically so you brought the bike in you racked it up it's got a thousand miles on it which is really low for a 2018 model year bike now I noticed the first thing you did was you you put the trays underneath the bike pulled the drain plugs drained the fluids and then immediately while they, those were draining you you did like a it looked like a multi-point inspection on the bike what what are some of the things that you were kind of looking for as the fluids were draining I was checking uh, tire depth, uh, brake pads, any oil leaks anywhere, you know, rocker boxes are common, push rod tubes, uh, just kind of like looking at everything to see if there's anything wrong I can find with the bike. Um, with 1K, I'm not expecting it, but I'm just, this is how I do all my services. So to me, I do all my checks, if the same if it was a 1K or a 30K, 60K or whatever. I go through, this is just the routine I'm set to do and yeah. it works for me and it's quick. So I just look at everything and go yeah. through. But. Peanut gallery behind us. What's up world of YouTube? Don't mind, don't what you guys says he's lying about you all You guys gonna go check out some parts upstairs? Yeah, um, for, for the Grand Canyon trip. Yeah, okay. we gotta make sure we're up to speed. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. take off parts well, up I just there. wanna see John more than anything. I just wanna see that sweet beard he's got. We're, we're trying to film a video here guys, if you don't mind. So, you get the hell out of here, please. All right, we're done. I, I kind of mind. So, uh, All right, so, hold on a second. So, right now you're taking off the oil filter then? This is just a, a catch, so it doesn't drip all the oil down the front of the motor. How long do you leave the bike running? What, what, what's, what are you doing there? I'm just letting it warm up to get the uh, oils at operating temperature, to get all everything circulated back down to the oil pan, and then it comes out easier. And, faster because it's already warmed up.
So this is like the special wrench tool to get the filter off, right? Yeah. I think we sell those in parts. So you're obviously taking the derby cover off right now, so I know that's where you fill it, but are you are you looking for anything else in there? Or? Uh, this is where I'm going to be performing the clutch adjustment also. Okay, so you're doing a clutch adjustment then? Yes, and with every service we do a clutch adjustment. So what are you doing there? You're taking the, the battery cover off? Well, you take the side cover off to get to the transmission dipstick. Okay. So. I noticed when you pulled out the oil dipstick, a bunch more oil started coming out. Yeah, it kind of makes a vacuum with it on. So you want to open it up so that it could get all the fluids out and put more fluids in when you're ready yeah. at yeah. that point. So pulling the air cleaner cover off. Yeah. So you're gonna clean that basically? Yes. Or replace it? Uh, mostly be cleaning. This is only one k so usually they're really clean, but still wanna clean it. Put this in our ultrasonic parts washer. Ultrasonic parts washer? Is that a technical term or? That's the, what it does. It's a... <laughs> Is that really the name of it? The ultrasonic yeah. parts grater? Yeah. <laughs> okay, you were joking. <laughs> no. <dude>. <laughs> the water is heated up to like 110 degrees. We have it set at. And it's got some cleaning agents in it. Works into small crevices and breaks up the dirt and everything on the huh. part that's in there. So. Right on. How long does it go in there for? Uh, it's set for like five minutes. Okay. So. You get in there and just clean that out with a the rag then? Yeah, any excess oil because you got blowback from the breathers. How long do you usually let the three cavities drain? Until I don't see any fluid drip from them anymore. The obvious response. What are you looking for there? Uh, rocker box oil leaks, push rod tube oil leaks, uh, inspecting the oil cooler, making sure the fins are intact and nothing large stuck in them. And come over and check the brake pads higher depth. So how many miles does this bike have on it? Uh, 1k. Okay, so a thousand miles. You find anything, John, or you think it's good? No, everything looks good. Everything looks good, he says, so just checking all those gaskets and everything, making sure not, no leaks or anything. Looks like our transmission's completely drained. Looks like the engine oil's still trickling a little bit. And you also changed, uh, checked out the brake pads too, right? Yes. Is that cleaner or what? Yeah, it's just like contact cleaner and get the mounting surface cleaned up with the excess oil. So you're using the contact cleaner on the drain plugs? Yes. Cleaning up the drain plugs there. Taking off like the O-rings? Yes. Okay, so new O-rings on there. And I actually wire wheel the threads to get all that extra off. Okay. So the goal is just to get the threads as clean as possible then so there's no leaks out of the drain plug? Yeah, the O-ring is the main sealing surface. I want the uh, clean threads and then the O-ring is the uh, sealing. Okay, so that's the clutch line there, so you're separating the clutch line? Yeah, I'm taking out the free play so I can do a full clutch adjustment and then be able to lube the clutch cable also. Moving the free play, moving it up. Alright, so 
So lose up the clutch there. Now our air filter is done. So going back to the ultrasonic cleaner, pulling out the air filter here. And uh, rinse it with hot water to get the soapiness off. The last thing you put on? Yeah. How hot it is back here and stuff, it'll be dry by then. Okay. With the fan and stuff. So, what are you doing there, John? I was uh, adjusting a clutch here at the clutch basket with the free play all taken out. And then now I'll just the free plug. I was saying I was adjusting the clutch here, which is the the push rod that goes to the other side and this is the clutch basket so i'm adjusting the the basically the free play and the push rod okay and you have to do that with the free play and the clutch fully cable? collapsed okay yeah so the cable is fully collapsed to adjust the free play and the push rod yeah. and then from there you adjust the free play for the clutch cable if you have this fully extracted with no free play in it or collapsed then your adjustment here at the push rod is going to be different. It's gotcha. not going to be right. Now I'm going to run to parts and get my parts. Hey, had it all ready? How convenient. Got a piece of oh. everything. On top of it, dude. On top dude. of it, uh. All right, we got our parts now. Time to go to work. You got new O-rings on all the drain plugs, basically? Yes. So when the bike is back here, John, and you're going through the inspection and you find that there's like a, potentially like a leak or something like that, what then becomes the process? Do you identify it and have the service rider like call the customer or? Yeah, so basically I'll, identify it probably put in a parts list of parts i need to repair it print that out and then take it to the service rider inform him of what it is and what needs to be done and then either if the bike is uh out of warranty or in warranty depending or extended warranty then that's on the service rider to take the next step if it's uh usually if it's under factory warranty and depending on what it is exactly a lot of times we just redo the repair right away because we know it's under warranty. Right, and it's something that will be covered. If it's something major where factory has to give approval, then that's, you know, the service rider knows what those items are and he takes the right step. If it's extended warranty, he has to um, get approval for extended warranty and then also notify the customer because their user usually is a copay. So, and then if it's customer pay, which notify the customer and let them know what the damage yeah, is. Yeah, what's the damage you're going to be to <laughs> his pocket and then yeah. he gives us the go ahead or decline, so. Okay, right on. So another thing we kind of look for is just to make sure that there's any DIY work on the bike that it was done in a way that won't compromise the safety of the bike and immediately we spotted a passenger peg that's mounted underneath the pipes here this is obviously an aftermarket pipe with the vance and hines yeah this passenger peg i mean that's a good way to burn an ankle right there yeah it should be mounted up here and we just want to make sure that it's not going to compromise the safety of the bike does everything else look pretty good on the bike or yeah so else? far everything looks good tire depth's good tires look brand new actually so all right so replacing drain plugs at this point yes
So what do we do with the oil, John? Like, does someone come and collect it after a while, or what? Yeah, we, well, this is a oil caddy, and so I'll dump this oil in that, and then it sits there, and then we have guys uh, that'll come by when they start to get full, and they dump them in a big container in the back, and then I think it's uh, like once a week or every other week, another company comes and sucks out the container. <laughs> gotcha. So. so they don't dump it into the ocean, basically? No. <laughs> <laughs> or the or the drain. <laughs> <laughs> So the hot topic, what do we use in there? The Sin 3? So this is the synthetic gear oil for the transmission and primary, and then synthetic Sin 3 for the motor. So you put the gear oil in the transmission and the primary, you said? Yes. How much did the transmission take? It's uh, one quart. The primary is a little over a quart. And then uh, it's a five quart, but we notice it doesn't take a whole five quart because you always have some left over yeah. that doesn't come out. Yeah. So. So you fill up the oil filter there, yes. just to fit more oil in? Uh, you don't want to install a dry oil filter. Uh, okay. So you just always want to fill it up, and then you want to always lose the, this O-ring here on the oil filter, or else it's like almost impossible to get it back off. Really, without yeah. a lube? Yeah, when it's no lube, it's like, they, they get really tight. Yeah. <laughs> so. So how do you gauge how much to put in? Like over years of practice, <laughs> it, uh, it's just the master technician's touch, right there. You just know. Yeah, it's like I usually do uh, four and a half quarts for the soft fills and chlorine, and then um, I'll after my test ride and get it to operating temperature, I recheck it. Okay. And sometimes I got to add just a little bit to bring it up one dot on the dipstick, or sometimes it's right where I like it. So. Okay. That's one of the things we see a lot is someone that did their own service or oil change and they overfill it because they just dump all five quarts in and yep. then it's, you know, half a quart overfilled. What are some symptoms of overfilling it? Uh, it can be sluggishness, uh, excess blow by through the breathers. So, usually uh, excess blow by by the breathers is the most common one. I got a comment on that one just because it, it is one that I get a lot. You know, guys will buy a bike and then, you know, after like a thousand miles, five thousand miles or whatever, they'll call me and they'll say, hey, you know, my, my bike is leaking oil. And I say, well, where, where's the leaking oil from? They say, oh, it's like blowing on the side of my bike, like by, by my side cover and stuff. And I said, well, that's, that's blow by. Who, who changed your oil? And they'll say, oh, well, I changed it myself. And I'll say, well, did you overfill it? And of course, they can't always ask or answer that question directly, but more times than not, it's overfilled, and so it's it's got oil that's puking out the air cleaner. Um, so don't overfill your oil, guys. That's like uh, probably one of the biggest DIY mistakes that I see. You can kind of eyeball the, the oil level there, John. Yeah, it's. That's another thing we see a lot is when people do their services, they usually don't have enough oil in the primary because uh, the primary fluid is supposed to touch the bottom of the clutch plate. And so you find that people underfill the primary fluid. Yeah, because they usually just dump one quart in and it always takes a little more than one quart. Gotcha. So.
He's doing a good job, Steve. I'm watching good, good. him. I'm, I'm always watching. Eye in the sky. This is the boss right here. Okay. Making sure everything's good. When are we gonna see your bike build, Steve? Uh, it's a surprise. It's, it's a surprise. Surprise to be announced. Soon. People are asking, dude. The fans want to see it. Well, we're gonna have to wait. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Uh, maybe born, next week. Born free for sure, right? Yeah, born free for sure. Um, it'll be at born free. But we'll try to get a video for you guys uh, as soon as possible. All right, we're holding to it. Screwing the oil filter back on. You clean it off like residual oil right there? Yeah, Artie does a really good job, but this kind of just helped him out so he doesn't have so much to clean off. Yeah, so we always detail the bikes after this, and so that's one of the areas that gets residual oil because inevitably when you take that filter off, some of it will kind of spill on the front of the case there. The last thing we want is for someone to call us and say, hey, my bike is leaking oil, uh, when really all it is is just some residual that's coming off of it. Just checking all critical fasteners at this point, John. Yeah, so there's basically almost everything I could put a wrench on. Battery cable and it's probably like almost a full turn loose. Oh wow! Yeah, loose battery cable there which may manifest by what, the bike not starting one day or what? Yeah, you could have issues. Something else is plugged in here because this wire is not stock. So something's probably maybe the tuner he has or something. I'll find out more once I take the seat off. But, okay. Yeah. So a foreign wire discovered here. Could be a tuner associated with the exhaust system here. All right, cool. Well, so tighten the, the terminal cable to the battery there. Exhaust bolts there? Yes. Great caliper. Cable pushed on all the way. Check every single spoke. Yeah, um, lately they've been pretty good, but back in, I think it was like 2006, it was really common to find loose spokes at the 1K service. Tire pressure is always on this label on the frame. Checking the tire pressure here. What is it in the front? 30 in the front. And then, 40 in the rear. 30 in the front, 40 in the rear. For this model. Yeah, for model. this model. Yeah, it's quite a bit different for my touring bike. I think my touring bike's 36 in the front. Yeah, it's 36 and 40 in the rear. All right, so the air cleaner's all good to go now? Yeah. That's uh, another issue we see sometimes is that people install the, the breather tube wrong and they'll get it pinched when they go to install it. And when they pinch it off, the bike can't breathe and then you get some serious motor problems then. Huh. So don't pinch the breather tube, kids. Yeah. 
check in rear brake fluid there? Yes. So this bike is an 18. I highly recommend you flush the brake fluid every two years. Which this brake fluid is contaminated. You got a little meter there? Yeah. So when it's red, that's contaminated basically? Yeah, greater than 3%. So I need a brake flush now. So this is something I'll go talk to a service provider about and have them contact the customer and see if they want me to perform a brake flush. Since the bike is more than two years old at this point, yeah. you check that and the reading shows it's contaminated. Can you tell like visually when you look at it if it's contaminated? No, because right now it looks actually, you know, it has the normal, typical, good goldish color. It's not clumpy or thick or anything or dark. I checked the charging system. That one good? Yeah. So Justin just called the customer to see if he wanted to change out that rear brake fluid. What, what did he say, Justin? What did he say? He said do it. Okay, so the customer gave us the green light, which is the smart move, because his brake line will last longer, won't get corroded. And Sometimes they can make the, what you say, the ABS module can lock up if the, if the fluid gets too contaminated with moisture or whatever. This is not ABS? Okay. Okay, so obviously the test ride is a super important part of doing a service on the bike. So I just wanted John to talk us through a little bit about the things that he's looking for out on a test ride. Well, I check uh, the operation of the clutch, make sure it disengages and engages properly. Uh, I'll, both front and rear brakes operate correctly. If the bike had cruise control, I'd activate it and make sure it disengages with the brakes and rolling off the throttle and pulling on the clutch, make sure it's all operational. Um, then when I come back from the test ride, I double check the oil level at when it's now hot. And if I need to, I'll top it off to make it make sure it's at the right uh, level. On uh, touring bikes, when during the services, I, uh, it's a little bit different. They got the radios. So I check the software on the radios, make sure they're up to date. If they're not up to date, that's when we'll update them. And that's part of the service. Um, 18 and newer bikes have a service clock. And at that time we reset the service clock. Um, now, now that this customer said that he wants you to go ahead and change the, the rear brake fluid, are you gonna re-rack the bike and, and do that service at this point? Yes, yeah, so I'm gonna re-rack it, do a complete uh, front and rear flush and bleed and then uh, take it for another test ride, make sure there's no air bubbles in the system, and then put it in the wash line to be washed. Are those systems independent of one another, or? The On this model, yes. So you're gonna do both the front and the rear? Yes. And that's like, what, like an hour, hour and a half, or how long It's is that? an hour for uh, non-ABS and two hours for ABS. Okay. So ABS bikes, you have to actually hook it up to a digital tech and use the digital tech for the bleed process, and it takes a little bit longer, that's why we charge more for it. Okay, so we're gonna get some shots of John doing this brake maintenance as well. Is this gonna run into like your schedule? Like, did you have things after this? Like, this is creating more time than you had anticipated for this bike service, right? Yes, but uh, usually we kind of, you know, do the scheduling where there's always something. They give us a little extra time because they kind of expect, to, you know, to always find something. And then, um, actually, uh, this was my last service scheduled for the day. Okay. So. It actually worked out, it's not at the end of the day and still have time to work on it, so. All right, well, I'll leave you to it. I'll get out of your way. Yeah, well, I sucked out all the bad fluid and I'm gonna put fresh fluid and then just keep on sucking it out.
can see the water that's been collected in the cover. Oh dang. So, so the main contaminant is moisture getting in the line then, huh? Yes. Doing that. Dot four is very corrosive and it'll eat painted parts. So that's where you can see if uh, around the master cylinder lid, there's that corrosion and the paint being peeled away. That's from it not being properly cleaned off afterwards and stuff. So very common thing yeah. we see when we have bikes that are treated in that cap on the brake master cylinder, the black finish on there is all being bubbled up and like flaked off. So. Yeah. I, that, you actually answered a question for me, John. I didn't know that. So yeah. that's just from people not wiping off the excess fluid. Yeah, so we, um, distilled water and rubbing alcohol, a mixture of that. That's what I actually wiped on a rag and wiped it all off when I was done because it, it's a liquid. You're going to get it places. So that's the thing. You got to be careful and then clean it off right away with the proper stuff. You're just eyeballing it and like you noticed that it was something was off or what? Yeah. So, so what, I, what's wrong with it? Um, it's the wrong clip for one and then there's normally a nipple that kind of goes sets inside the fender so it won't rotate So it'll and it's supposed to sit up higher like that It was missing the little nipple to hold into the fender and then he had this clip Which is very thin and this is the correct one which is thicker which will bring It sit up higher enough in the fender. All right, so you can give him the new parts Now it doesn't yeah. go up and down. Maybe better fit. It yeah. protrudes more so you can put the screw in there. So the covers on the tank and the front fender just in case you get any fluid on there? Or? Yeah. Accidents do happen, so. Better safe than sorry. Right. All right, so after service paperwork here, so what do we got? So I put my notes of what I did. I did a 1K service, where the tire depth was, uh, how the pads were, what the charging system was, and I performed a brake flush. Um, this, the service rider will actually put on a, the work order and be printed out as notes. And then there also is a checklist that we do, and it kind of goes over everything that we did and adjust or lube. So I see check dot four front brake fluid for moisture on there. So that's basically yes. what you had to change out, right? Yes. So. so too much moisture. And so that was an additional expense for the, the customer. And I know sometimes repair shops get a bad rap for like trying to upcharge customers for things they don't need. Is that something you do on the regular, John? No. <laughs> Honestly, I don't want to do any extra work if I don't have to. I'd rather move on to the next job. Oh, so. there, you, there you go. But, uh, I want the customer to be safe and that's my job is to make sure they're on a vehicle that is safe to ride. Yeah. Right on. Cool. Well, thanks, John. Appreciate your time. And uh, I think we have a, a happy customer here and thorough job, dude. I must say more thorough than even I thought that we did. So and I and I sell our service department every day. But honestly, with all the stuff that you go over and check and tighten all the stuff like that was that was a lot. So right on, man. Thanks. Thank you. So now that John has done the brakes again, he has to take the bike out a second time for a test ride uh, just to make sure that the brakes are working properly. The technicians always take bikes out when they you know, do any service like that, but especially brakes or like wheels, things that are major components to the bike, you definitely want to give it one final test ride to make sure everything feels good and, and is operating correctly. And then after that, he pushes it into the wash line where um, our detailer gives it a wash and then it's good to go. Anyways guys, thanks a lot for watching. Uh, if you want to see more of these garage videos kind of behind the scenes in our service department, let me know. I will definitely be willing to make more of them. Again, I'm not really going into the detail to make it a tutorial video, guys. I just want to kind of give you an idea of the things that we do and some of the things that are necessary to do to keep your Harley-Davidson running properly. 
But if you guys want to give me uh, advice on a video that you'd like to see in the future, let me know in the comment section below. Do you want to see a 5K, a 20K? Do you want to see like a bar job or a wheel swap? Or, you know, let me know what you guys want to see. Or if you guys don't like these garage videos, just say, hey, Matt, do your normal stuff and I won't do any of these anymore. But yeah, let me know what you guys want. I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks a lot for watching. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you're looking for a service, you live in Southern California, hit us up at Laidlaw's Harley Davidson. Give us a call first though. We're closed Sunday, Monday. Give us a call. You should definitely schedule an appointment. We're getting into the busy season right now. It's summer. So sometimes we get booked one, two, three weeks out. And so make sure you call, get an appointment. Uh, we are down a technician right now or two. Um, and so get an appointment first and then bring your bike in. Thanks a lot for watching guys. Later.